is Christmas time. And today we are making the most controversial, the most maligned Christmas dessert of all of them, the fruit cake. We're gonna start with a whole host of dried fruits. Now, key, crucial to this, we're not using any of the neon stuff that you probably associate with a fruit cake. We're gonna use naturally dried fruits. And personally, I think that that is where the fruit cake has gotten a bad rap. I think it's because we started using stuff that wasn't natural anymore. So first things first, some dates, some dried cherries, raisins. I know what fruit is, that's a raisin. Mm, dried blueberries, fancy apricot, and crystallized ginger. So we're gonna soak these overnight with two different things. One of them is a really strong chai tea, like I let this steep for too long. And then most importantly, some booze. So we got some good old Captain Morgan. Oh yeah, spiced rum. I mean, this is the key to our good fruit cake, honestly. It's the dried fruit, but it's also just as much the booze. Now. If you're like, I don't drink, you could double up the amount of tea. You could add orange juice or apple juice. There's plenty of ways if you're like not a person that wants any booze in theirs, that's totally fine. All you're gonna do once, once this has been stirred up, you're just gonna cover it with some saran wrap and then you're gonna let it soak overnight, which I've already done. Do, do, do. So once it's soaked overnight, we're gonna pour all of our fruit that's soaked over here. And we're gonna also add the tea and the rum that's it's been soaking in. No reason to get rid of that. Fruit, cinnamon stick. We're gonna add some extra sugar, some OJ, and we're gonna add our butter. Perfect. Final step, we're just gonna zest an orange and a limon. Smart cookie, fact of the day. Fruit cake, it's very popular in Britain. In fact, it is so popular it was served at both Princess Diana and Kate Middleton's weddings. It can't be that bad if like royalty is eating it at their wedding, it's not that bad, okay? We have melted our butter. We have let this concoction cool now. And now it's time to make a cake. Super simple, you don't even need a mixer for this. Truly, this could not be easier. All right, flour, baking soda, baking powder, equal parts, a little bit of salt, cloves, we've got cinnamon, and nutmeg. All right, so we're gonna give this guy a stir. Ooh, here's another smart cookie fact of the day. Did you know that fruitcake even went to space on the Apollo 11? trip to the moon, they had a piece of pineapple fruitcake that went with them, but apparently um, nobody wanted that fruitcake because now it's just on display at the Smithsonian. So, moon cake? I'm gonna fish my little cinnamon stick buddy out of there. So this is our butter and our OJ and all of our fruit. Whoa boy, making a mess. We just gotta mix it up now. Two eggs. It doesn't look that appetizing. It's gonna be fine, okay? Calm down out there, internet world. Final step, gotta add some nerds. These are roasted, unsalted mixed nuts. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> we are gonna separate the batter into these four mini loaf pans, but first, Baker's Joy. Love you guys, shout out. It's booze, it's fruit, it's flour. I realize that this looks like baby food. I know, you know, I know, your mama knows, everybody knows, it's gonna be fine. If you wanna live on the edge and pour this out of a bowl, you do you. But I'm a little scared. So this is a fun thing we're doing now. Look, every every once in a while, it doesn't it doesn't look good, but it tastes good. I feel like this is this is one of those moments, okay? So these are gonna bake for an hour at 350. Great, okay, so we have just baked these. They have been cooling about 10, 15 minutes, so they're still a little warm. So now we're just going to try to flip them out. There it is. Yes, see, so cute, gift giveable. 
One more. Last, very important step. We gotta add some more booze. I know the fruit soaked in it, but now what you really need is to let it soak in. So I'll tell you the caveat with these guys. The most important step, you could, you could eat these now. And I'm sure they would be good, but ideally six to eight weeks. That's why these are such a good gift because they require a lot of time and a lot of resources. After these are brushed, you'll wanna go ahead and put them in a baggie, in a gallon size baggie, and then put them in your fridge for the next month and a half, literally. So I know it sounds crazy, you're gonna be like, those are gonna mold. They're not because sugar and alcohol are both preservatives. And in the fridge, nothing's gonna happen except intensify those flavors. Well, hey guys, it's been a while. So nice of you to join me again. It's on a pair of glasses. <laughs> I love this thing. All right, legitimately, I made these like a month ago when I came up with this recipe. So these have been curing in my fridge for like a month. I think that these are great for gifts, so we're gonna package them up. But before we do that, just for a little extra pretty, I think we're gonna put a little, uh, put a little powdered sugar on them. Oh, look at that snow. Look at that holiday snow. Perfect. Look how pretty those are. Here we go. The true test, what does this taste like? I'm going in, I'm getting this slice. Pretty delicious, I'm not gonna lie. Like, there's so much going on with this. There's, it's fruity, it's nutty. There's, you can definitely taste the orange juice. And the great thing is, I think that the flavor of the rum really just enhances everything. It's not overpowering, it's, it's pretty good. I mean, I hope that you will try this. I think that it's got a lot of staying power, both in your fridge and in history. If you enjoy this recipe and this video, please make sure that you like, share, subscribe, ring the bell on YouTube, all of that stuff. Happy holidays, everybody. Be me and Santa hanging out all Christmas.